right, good afternoon once again. This is Brother Darren, Hebrews 9 verse 27, and John 3 verse 16, YouTube ministry. So another video for you this afternoon. And um, what I wanted to cover in the wake of the current war that we have that started on uh, October the 7th between Israel and Hamas is some quotes by the Pope which are strange and totally satanic which reveals the true nature of the papacy in line with the Catholic Church and I'm also going to look at how Islam and the rise of Islam has actually supported Catholicism but I'm going to take a look at a quote or some comments that the Pope made firstly from back in I think 2016 which says this is taken from the Guardian which essentially say that it's not right to identify Islam with violence okay so this is taken from Reuters 1st of August 2016 and it says this, Pope Francis says it's not right to identify Islam with violence. Leader of the Catholic Church says all religions have a small fundamentalist group and that faith was not the only cause of terrorism. Well, I beg to differ on that. He is right, you can have small fundamentalists, but historically and fundamentally for Christianity, Jesus came to bring the kingdom of God, peace on earth to all men. Jesus says his kingdom was not of this world. And Matthew 5 verse 44, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So we don't actually have a small fundamentalist group in Christianity. Because our true fundamentals are anti-violence. Of course, there, there, there can be times where... Or well, there is a future time where the Lord will judge. But as Christians per se, as people, especially in evangelizing and taking the gospel out, we are anti-violence. But the Pope's misleading quote in line with the terrorism, the rampant terrorism, unfortunately, that we find within Islam which I do get that the general populace of Islam are not committing terrorist acts or violent acts, but Muhammad himself was a bit of a warlord. Jesus, in his ministry with the disciples, attacked no one, robbed no one, stole from nobody, and never picked up a sword. Again, he said his kingdom was not of this earth. And you cannot find a single apostle apart from Peter who Jesus rebuked and healed the air of the person that he attacked that was there to do violence. They weren't there to go out and do violence or make up some excuse that somebody had broken a treaty with them like the Jews supposedly in Islam and then Muhammad attack and wipe them out or some Muslims do that. That's not what we find in Christianity, but let's continue. So Pope Francis has said it, it, is, it is wrong to identify Islam with violence and that social injustice and idolatry of money were among the prime causes of terrorism. Well, let's look at that and see whether that's, that's actually truthful before we do some more digging uh, into, into this. Let's just take the attack by Hamas um, on October the 7th. Hamas, within their original 1988 charter, have a saying from the Hadiths in which a final war, supposedly, or a scenario of war in the future, um, will occur whereby the Muslims will fight the Jews and these Jews will run behind rocks and trees, one which is called the Garad tree, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And the Jews will want to hide behind these rocks and trees 
and the trees will cry out and say, oh, Muslims, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill me. That was what was in the original 1988 Hamas Charter. And that particular quote from the Hadiths has been quoted by um, Al Husseini. Al Husseini was the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. And Al Husseini was sent for by Hitler. And Hitler's plan after talking to Al Husseini was after they'd finished eliminating the Jews in Europe, they would move on to the Jews in the Arab, Arab sphere. And if you get the picture, it would have been worldwide. Now, Al Husseini had quoted that hadith. The hadith came from Muhammad. Hamas have used it. I believe Ben Laden's even used it. And it is known essentially that the Muslims believe that the Jews are treacherous and that they will have a future war and they will, will eliminate Jews. That's why, partially why the attack on October the 7th happened. But anyway, that's the Pope and that's what he says. Um, the Catholic Church to me is apostate. It has many false doctrines and Catholics need to kind of come out of it and, and recognise and realise that. But let's have a look at some other information in connection with this. So I'm just demonstrating this uh, off of um, my phone. But this is a video that is on YouTube. Uh, Pope Francis on Islam and terrorism. And it was on the channel for the Wall Street Journal. So essentially it's the same comments that I've just shown from the Guardian article. But it's taken from the, uh, the YouTube posting for the Wall Street Journal. Now in the comments section, you have, I am Muslim and this made me love the Pope. Well, I've already mentioned in a previous video that Muslims unfortunately do not believe, they believe that Jesus is just a mere prophet. He didn't die for anybody's sins. He didn't resurrect. He's not divine. But this video made this, this Muslim love the Pope and somebody else says this guy is a legend and is a good person he's not a legend and a good person none of the popes are they've taken the title holy father or they can be referred to as holy father and the bible says to call um no man your father but by god now you can have a spiritual father in the sense of somebody can mentor you but not for somebody to be overarching to the point where they could have false doctrines false dogma you become an adherent of this apostate denomination and you go with those false doctrines even denying the very christ that brought you but well, more on that shortly now we also have this um in 2019 pope francis and king Mohammed the i believe that's the uh the fifth or sixth visited the Mohammed fifth or sixth institute that trains Muslim prayer leaders to serve in Morocco and, and abroad this was one of the first stops in the Pope's visit to the kingdom now Pope Francis and King Mohammed I just mentioned they met up and Pope John Paul was the last head of the Catholic Church to visit Morocco in August 1985. Moroccans are seeing the current visit in a positive way and the message that Pope Francis has for them is that Muslims and Christians can peacefully coexist. Now, I have to be honest and say, I do not class a Catholic at all who recognises false doctrines such as the Immaculate Conception such as perpetual virginity, such as venerated saints and statues, such as the ascension of Mary into heaven, such as the Pope being head of the church, 
the the whole church purgatory and there's probably another num all the marian dogmas and another number of false doctrines i do not count that individual at all who knowingly knows the this is false or will lie on it to be saved at all there might be some simple catholics that don't have full understanding of this all that may be saved but there is even some debate around that so i just preach that catholics are to flee catholicism now anyway ahead of the two-day visit pope francis issued a video message for the moroccan people he thanked king mohammed I believe that's the fifth. Uh, for sorry, actually that's the sixth for inviting him and Moroccan authorities for the collaboration in making this visit possible. So what we see is that uh, Pope Francis, with Mohammed the sixth, has gone uh, to this Mohammed the sixth institute that trains Muslim prayer leaders to serve in. So he's gone. He's gone to this institute whereby. Um, actual imams actual leaders actual what you, you would be similar to preachers uh to where they uh, are being trained and the pope has thanked uh has thanked king Mohammed the sixth for this and islam literally affirms what is antichrist but yet the pope has gone to to go and do this Now here's another article here, um, 1peter5.com, where Pope Francis has made Jesus the devil. What he basically does in this, I'm not going to go through it all, but I will just reference it so you can see it. Pope Francis Christ made himself the devil. Let's see if I can get options on this for this to be seen. Reject all. But there's, there's the article, April the 10th, 2017. If you read through it, what essentially the uh, Pope Francis does is, he says that where in the Old Testament there was an account where the Israelites had been bitten by these fiery serpents uh, or poisonous serpents as a result of their sin. And Moses said to them, if you look upon... Um, essentially this this icon uh which had a fiery serpent which was like on a on a stake if you look on that to understand essentially or identify with your sin and repentance um in no way identifying that with being an idol or god but if you look on that and you're repentant essentially you'll be healed from being um from being bitten you'll live and you'll come into repentance now, Jesus also said in the scripture that if I be lifted up just as Moses had, Moses had lifted up, um, you know, this this icon like like Moses did in the in the desert, if I be lifted up, um, I will draw all, all men unto me. Um, I don't know if if I've got that right in exact context, but Jesus is basically saying um, he wasn't saying he's the devil. Of course not. And that serpent that is on that stake is not supposed to be the devil. But what Pope Francis did is when you go through this text, he likens Christ, where Christ has made this, this analogy uh, to being the devil. And it's what you call double speak. It's what you call sophistry, which the papacy, being so apostate, excels in. Okay, so let's get to the final part of the presentation. But you can look that up yourself. 1peter5.com Pope Francis Christ made himself the devil. And I pray any, any Catholics that are subscribed to my channel um, read this. And in connection with what else I've said and I'm about to show you, flee and leave Catholicism and repent and come to Jesus in case you be lost. The Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now let's do the last tie-in to the comment that the Pope had made. Now bearing in mind, in terms of Islam, you've got you've got Hamas, 
You've got Palestinian Islamic Jihad. You've got Boko Haram, which have been slaughtering Africans around the Nigeria and Niger region. You've got Al-Qaeda. You've got Al-Shabaab. And then throughout Islamic history, the first real notable slave trade on Africans was the Trans-Saharan slave trade. If that's not terrorism, I don't know what what is. And multitudes of Africans were taken. Some of the men were castrated and enslaved under Islam. <laughs> None of that is of God, and that is terrorism, so the Pope doesn't have a clue. Plus, the Islamic hordes, um, whilst arguably fighting the Byzantines, which that itself wouldn't have been of Christ. You didn't find the apostles going anywhere to fight anybody. They conquered the Levant. They conquered North Africa, parts of West Africa. And there's other parts of the globe. Um, I think, you know, there's issues around India and Pakistan, to say the least, that they've been involved in. Then you have successive waves of sort of Muslim regimes or caliphates that have even invaded the land of Israel. And that Islamic doctrine and ideology infused with some of the contention and history between Israel and the Palestinians and the ideology for jihad. And, and as I mentioned, the Hadith, um, which says that the rocks and trees would cry out in, in a final battle where Jews hide behind them, that easily goes to show you that there's terrorism here and we must acknowledge it, despite the Pope's words. And we, if you look on a, a website called the religion of peace.com, I believe it is, it actually numbers the amount of terror attacks um, on a monthly basis and it dates them all the way back to. 9-11 so this stuff is undeniable but the Pope because he has a sinister antichrist agenda is falling and duping the masses and actually for those of you that are not born again that are not true believers that don't know Christ this should be a witness to you from Matthew chapter 24 where the Bible talks about false prophets and false Christ that are, will arise the Bible also speaks against nation against nation, ethnos against ethnos. Islam, in their false Christ, which is called Isa, and Catholicism, in a Christ that is can, can almost be subservient to Mary and is constantly shown at Christmas as a little baby, have a different form of Christ within them. And that false Christ within them, which is not the true Christ as taken from the Bible, has led to much division and hatred throughout the world. Many people displaced in the transatlantic slave trade and the trans-Saharan slave trade. Many people racially discriminated against. But let's continue. So this is the rise of Islam and it's helping the rise of the papacy. Islam, though at war with a Roman Catholic-inspired international coalition of fighters in the Crusades, has actually assisted the papacy in its fight for ecclesiastical and geopolitical world domination. In help for its false claim of papal supremacy and to subjugate and to destroy enemies of Catholicism. The Eastern Emperor Focus decreed that the Bishop of Rome would be the head of all churches so that's what we call papal supremacy, the universal bishop in 607 AD. After this, the first alleged revelation of Muhammad was in 610 AD. Islamic forces struck back at the Eastern Empire, the Byzantines, against the Eastern Emperor Heraclius the Younger, who executed Phocas. So I would just say that you all need to do your own reading around that. But um, I've done it, and this is a solid uh, and stable scholarship. Now, in 595 AD, John IV the Faster 
the 33rd Bishop or Patriarch of Constantinople, starts using the title of Universal Bishop, and Pope Gregory I denies the title even for himself. Bishop of Rome, Gregory I, he protested John, John IV the Foster's use of the title Universal Bishop, saying such a claim is a sign the Antichrist is near, and calls it a proud and profane title, and equates John IV's um, usage of this title to the devil himself. So essentially what Pope Gregory I was saying, that by you taking this title, you are the precursor to the Antichrist. Now on the 19th of February 607, Emperor Focus appointed Boniface III as the new Bishop of Rome. Then Focus issued an imperial decree by the Roman government, recognising Boniface I as the head of all churches and the universal bishop. Focus transferred the title of universal bishop from the Diocese of Constantinople to the Diocese of Rome. Okay, but if we go back to Heraclius, um, who was the emperor who, who executed Phocas, uh, Heraclius soon lost many of his new, newly uh, regained lands to the Rashidun Caliphate, to the Muslim Caliphate. Emerging from the Arabian Peninsula, the Muslims quickly conquered the Sassanian Empire, that was the Persians, because the Persians were warring against the Byzantines. The Byzantine Empire was where the Emperor Constantine had sort of uh, left from out of Rome in the 4th century and went and built Constantinople, which is now modern day in, uh, Istanbul. Now in 636, the Muslims marched into Roman Syria, defeating Heraclius' brother Theodore. Within a short period of time, the Arabs conquered Mesopotamia, Ar Armenia and Egypt. That sounds like terrorism to me. And that's on mass with mass forces. Heraclius responded with reforms which allowed his successors to combat the Arabs and avoid total destruction. Now to quote Britannica, there were five patriarchates, collectively called the Pentiarchy, and these were the first to be recognised by the legislation of the Emperor Justinian, who reigned from between 527 to 565, later confirmed by the council in Trullo. These five were Rome, Constantinople, Alexandria, Antioch and Jerusalem. Though after the Muslim invasions of Egypt and Syria in 638 to 640, the bishops of Rome and Constantinople were alone in possessing any real power. So we're literally talking about the Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church were the churches that were left after the Muslim invasions to have real power. However, the Church of Rome was always contending with Constantinople for it to be the supreme church, to have the supreme bishop. The fall of Constantinople, Byzantine Empire and rival to Rome eliminated. Now the fall of Constantinople in 1453 then fortuitously saw the Byzantine Empire diminished and left the papacy in top spot. The fall of Constantinople was also tied to Dumb Diverses, a papal bull which endorsed Portugal's initiating role in the Western transatlantic slave trades under, under Prince Henry the Navigator. The West, under Roman Catholicism, would only provide the East, Byzantine Constantinople, with help against the Turks if the East converted from Orthodox to Catholic Christianity. This sparked riots amongst the Eastern Orthodox populace who hated the Western Catholics for the sack of Constantinople in 1204 AD. Meanwhile, the Ottomans defeated most of the empire except for Constantinople. The East ultimately capitulated and accepted Catholicism, but it was too late. On May the 29th, 1453 AD or CE, I prefer AD in the year of our Lord, Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Turks and the Byzantine Empire came to an end. Constantinople was tra transformed into the Islamic city of Istanbul. Byzantine uh, Constantine uh, appealed to Western, uh, to Western Europe for help, but Pope Nicholas V was unwilling to support the city. Now, ever since the mutual, mutual excommunication of the Orthodox and Roman Catholic churches in 1054, which is known as the Great Schism, so that's where they parted ways, the Roman Catholic West had been trying to reintegrate the East. The West now used this as a negotiating tactic, 
promising to send help if the Byzantines brought their church back into communion with Rome. Attempts had been made to do this after the Council of Florence and the Council of Basel, but the Orthodox population refused to support it. Ultimately, Pope Nicholas and many other Western leaders made the, dis dis the decision not to support the Byzantines, that empire in its greatest time of need, although some troops did arrive from the city-states of northern Italy to lend their support. Now, Islam, whilst vying for religious control of the papacy at the odd time in history, can only be seen to have assisted in solidifying the papal supremacy position at the cost of maybe millions of lives in bloody carnage and maelstrom. The Catholic Church and the papacy have also been involved in or influenced multiple wars, such as the Thirty Years' War, the Hussite War, the massacre of St. Bartholomew's Day, the Dutch Revolt, as well as purges and persecutions such as the Inquisitions, um, on such as the Waldenses and other Pro Protestants, and taken what can only be estimated as millions, if not tens of millions of lives, in a lust for papal supremacy, power and control, and has not really changed policy on Protestants not being heretics since Vatican Council II. Papal false doctrines such as on celibacy for priests and nuns are none other than such as the doctrine of devils. See 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. And while some Protestants evangelicals might be under the illusion that the days of persecution via influence from the papacy are gone, it is historic fact and truth that a leopard cannot ever change its spots because it's full of false doctrine and dogma. So we could even at some point in the future expect persecution, but if not, the Catholic Church and the papacy are fully aligned with this new world order and that agenda and the way it's all going. Anyway, I'll finish up my, my, my um, video there. It's a bit longer than I had expected, but there's some good information in there, but good information is to be acted on. In fact, take the good out of it. Or should I say take the O out of it and change it into God information. God wants to call those who have minds truly of, of understanding. If you're in this any of these false apostate denominations to come out. This is not ad hominems at you personally. This is not even um, ridiculing your intellect. But you're in the wrong false denominations if you're in any of these. Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholicism in particular. And what I've summarised and what I've shown is the connections between <clears throat> terrorism, the rise of Islam and its help in the rise of the papacy, and how the Pope had said that Islam uh, is not uh, really a sort of terrorist orientation. And once again, I do say that not all Muslims are at all. But in its militancy and what it's done and what it will do, Islam is totally unrivaled. And um, it has supported the papacy in its ascension to the so-called throne. But this has all now been revealed. Lives have been lost. And I pray that this truth hits those who truly will believe, adhere and rely on truth and sound doctrine. Um, the Bible says that you should fear he who can cast both body and soul into hell. And the Bible says that liars will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be caught in a lie and a delusion of these false competing Christ identity cults that are not authentic or true to first century AD Christianity and sound doctrine, sola scriptura from the Bible. Please come out. I do love you in Christ, but I've got to be hard. People have lost lives and suffered. Um, the world has been dominated. Um, conquests. Slave trades. You name it. Anyway, God bless his brother Darren. Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16 YouTube ministry.